Yeah, I'm pretty sure the halls are cooked because only one of them is reacting at all. Oh, no, hold on, there we go. Two of them reacted. But this third one still is not doing shit. This third one just doesn't do anything. Alright guys, so I told you that I would make a video trying to fix my EX30 motor. Um, the hall sensor I was having, right? Um, so Alien Rides is awesome. I bought my Wheel 3 Alien Rides. They are again, sending me out a replacement motor um, to deal with my hall sensors. So I will be using that new motor. Um, but I want to try to fix this motor just as a backup and to kind of just go through how to fix one of these motors if someone else is having these problems that isn't under warranty. Um, overall, it's a pretty cheap fix. It's just kind of delicate and a pain in the butt to do. So we're going to try and do it today. Um, I got a little bit carried away already and have gone through most of, you know, um, I've gone through most of the prep work already. Um, basically, you're going to have to take the entire, what do you call this, a stator? I don't know. Take this part out of your wheel. Um, I will say, real quick, cheat mode to get that thing out of the rim. If you have a 3D printer, 3D printing spools, you stack like two of them up on top of each other and just push it right through. Amazing. So easy. I was trying to rip one out one time. It was like a pain in the ass. Once I figured out the 3D printing spool trick, it's like nothing. Um, but anyway... Basically, what we're going to need to do, right, is first you have to remove your old hall sensors. Um, two of them I got out pretty easily. The third one was a total pain in the balls. I had to, like, literally break it and chip out all the little pieces of plastic. So hopefully I got it all out and I can fit one in there, no problem. Um, but your three hall sensors go right here. They were attached to this board. Um, what you're going to need is something called a solder sucker or like a desoldering pump I don't know exactly what they call them but basically after I used the soldering iron to heat up the pins and pull them out there was still a bunch of junk solder left on the board um, then you can just use your soldering iron to heat up each of these little notches and suck the solder right out get it hot and Boom, suck it right out as it's hot and it'll clean off this board for you. Um, so that's the first step you want to do. You got to get the all the hall sensors out and get your board clean. Um, well, also, I'll, I'll show you the test. Um, I bought this little e-bike test kit. It was only like 12 bucks or something like that. Um, I'll show you the test that I did to check that my hall sensors were actually the problem. It was one of the three wasn't reacting at all. Um, and we'll show you that test once we get the new hall sensors in. Like I said, I got a little, little ahead of myself here and just started doing this without filming. Um, I had to make a little adapter to plug my uh, hall sensors from the EX30 motor into the tester. We'll go over it, um, but for now, uh, let's just see. I bought new hall sensors on Amazon.com. They're super cheap. I got like a 30 pack for like eight bucks. I don't know enough to know the specifications of the hall sensors. So the hall sensors that came out of this had no markings. They had no specifications. So I basically just ordered some hall sensors. Um, there's a bunch of different types on there. I don't know if these are the right ones. As far as I can tell, realistically they they're all like pretty much the same i really i don't know enough if anybody knows better than me in the comments drop it below maybe there's a very specific hall sensor i will say that the wires on these look a lot thinner than the wires on the ones i pulled out but the ones i pulled out had some kind of a coating on them so i don't know if the wires were really thinner or I, I just don't know enough. Um, I assume that these are going to be fine. They're rated to be used in an e-bike motor, so I would assume that they're going to be all right. Worst case scenario, they don't work. I think they're going to work, though, so let's try it. 
All right, so here's kind of the strategy I'm taking. These hall sensors are super delicate little things. Um, but so I just spread the wires out and stuck them in the board, making sure that these are all oriented the correct way. Um, what I'm going to do, because the ones that came out kind of had like, it seemed like they had some kind of a coating on the wires. So I'm going to use a little super glue. They were all glued in place. So I'm going to super glue them in place, put a little super glue on the wires just to make like a little coating. Um, and then we'll drop these in basically, right? And then after they're all in place and everything's good, I'll solder the tips in. All right, so that seemed to work pretty good. I glued these all in place. Well, that one's starting to stick out a little bit. Stick him back in there. Um, I put a dab of super glue on each one of these so that they should all stick in place nicely. And then I kind of bent the pins a little bit to get this board back into approximately the place. There was a little piece of, uh, I don't know what you would call this, plastic something or other that was sitting under this board. So that's also, I replaced that. Um, so this looks pretty close to what it looked like when I took it out the first time. Um, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and solder each of these little legs on uh, to the board. Alright, so I did this hall sensor replacement, but I don't know if it's correct, right? Look, I turned this on, right? Now I got one hall reacting immediately, but that one never turns off. So if I do these other two, light never changes, light. This one's like permanently on. I don't know if that's correct or not. Should the middle one always be on? Like I thought all three of them should blink. I mean at least I'm getting power to all three of them now, but like this middle one doesn't seem to be reacting correctly nothing happens on this one this one works this one works this one nothing all right so i'm having some trouble at this point um with this middle hall sensor i think i just got cheap hall sensors because these two work no problem but I've put two in the middle here now and it hasn't worked. Neither of them have worked. I don't know if it's just because of these cheap hall sensors I bought or what. I'm going to try another one and hope for the best here. The last two I put in, just the light stayed solid. So hopefully I put one other one in here and it works. Okay, so I was having a bunch of trouble here because for some reason I could not get this middle one to work for whatever reason, even though that was not the one that was broken. In the first place, it was the one to the left here, which does work. Uh, it turns out, for the EX30, the middle one is supposed to be facing the opposite direction of these two. It took me quite a while to figure that out. I just kind of randomly decided to flip the hall sensor around after cutting off two or three other ones. Um, so, two of them go, the two on the outside face with the, oh, I can't get it into focus. Come on, focus. Focus. Yes, so the two on the outside sit with that marking out. The one in the middle fits with the flat side out. And now it works perfectly. I plugged in my tester here. We take our magnet and we check all three. Works. 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 So, it was that simple. Uh, I just spent the past like hour trying to figure out was there a short in the wire? Was there a short on the board? Did I not clean all the solder off nicely? In my expert soldering job, you can see my globs of solder on there. That's fine though. Um, but yeah, so finally figured it out. This one is supposed to be backwards. Pain in my butt. But we've got it working now, so let's uh, close this thing back up here. This little tester has proven invaluable because I never would have figured this out for definitely worth the 12 bucks or whatever it cost me uh, to get this tester and a magnet. Um, yeah, and the hall sensors were uh, 30 for like 8 bucks or something like that. So for $20, basically, I was able to fix this motor. Um, 
Like I said, I don't know that these are the correct hall sensors. There are more expensive hall sensors that you could buy, which would jump the price up quite a bit. And we'll see if these ones end up failing after a while. I'm only going to ride it for a short amount of time. I should have the replacement warranty motor here soon. And I'm probably going to put that in the wheel just because, you know, uh, not that my shoddy work can be any worse than whatever Bagode brings, but yeah so that is how you fix your hall sensors if you have a hall sensor issue um definitely get one of these little e-bike testing kits e-bike testing device um cheap hall sensors you just need a solder sucker if you don't already have one a soldering iron um some super glue i'm just gonna go ahead and glue these all in place and then glue the little there's a little piece of plastic that was sitting under the board i will also glue that in place and that's about it. It should be working. Let me get this thing all back together and we will verify that it's working. All right, and now that I have the wheel back together, we plug it back in, we spin, and we have one, two, three, one, two, three. Excellent, that is what you want. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Beautiful. Now I just gotta finish putting this thing back together. Alright, so I am sitting here just editing this little hall sensor video for you guys, and I'm realizing that I never really made a conclusion. Um, but so I have ridden the EX30 with those hall sensors in it for about 100 miles or so. Um, you know, hit some high speeds, took it off road a little bit. Um, seems fine. Working great. So, yeah, replacement successful. Um, and I, like I said, I'm going to be getting a warranty repair. Unfortunately, Alien Rides didn't have a motor in stock for me, so it's taking a little longer than, uh, normal to get a replacement part, but that's fine, because I fixed this one. So I'm going to ride this for a little while, and then, uh, like I said, I'll probably put the new motor in when it comes, just to be on the safe side, but now I have a replacement, uh, backup motor. If something happens to the other one, you know, new rim, whatever. Uh, so that's cool. Um, definitely uh, great to learn these types of skills and have the tools available to you to uh, fix your own things. You know, it's going to be out of warranty eventually here. And if something else happens, now I know how to fix it. And I actually have the parts to fix it for uh, basically free now because I already have extra hall sensors, extra the, the tester, all the tools, whatever I need. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for watching. And I will... Hopefully this video helps somebody out there, and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.